order. In accordance with Standing Order 38, a motion to adjourn the House is deemed to have been made and seconded at this time. Therefore, the question is that this House do now adjourn. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Mr. Speaker, in November, I was alerted to two troubling cases where Syrian refugee families were targeted by the CRA with child, uh, Canada Child Benefit Clawbacks. We have long known that the government failed to provide proper access to language training for the Syrian refugee cohort. We also know that the government struggled finding Syrian refugee families affordable long-term housing, that many families were moved around numerous times. As a result, many Syrian refugee families entered month, nine, month 13 without having had access to the settlement services they needed to integrate into Canadian society as best as they could during their first year here. Despite all that, the CRA had apparently deemed it reasonable to target these families. In at least two instances, refugee families during the summer were given short timelines to respond to CRA demands to prove eligibility for the CCB. Despite it being the summer, one family had to prove their children were enrolled in school, a difficult task on a tight timeline when school is out. This was made more difficult by a lack of technical English knowledge. As a result, one family did not respond quickly enough, and the CRA billed them $27,000. Thankfully, the family's private sponsorship group found out and was able to help the family clear things up. This allowed the group to intervene in advance to prevent a second targeted family from being billed. The CRA has long been accused of only targeting so-called, quote, low-hanging fruit for audits and clawbacks, but this is, Mr. Speaker, a new low. The use of tax havens, tax law loopholes, and aggressive tax avoidance schemes result in fat cat CEOs and wealthy international corporations failing to pay their fair share every single year. The stock option loophole allows the wealthiest executives to drain over a billion dollars from federal and provincial budgets. Federal and provincial governments lose an estimated $7.8 billion through wealthy corporations hiding their profits in offshore tax havens. The Paradise Papers and the Panama Papers provided compelling details of their aggressive tax avoidance while entrenched in Canada. Yet the CRA has done little to address the issues presented there. Instead, they go after refugee families. Whether it's ignoring the issues of aggressive, aggressive tax avoidance by the wealthiest among us, paying billions for a 65-year-old leaky pipeline to bail out a taxes oil company, or putting back room pressure or putting backroom pressure on the former Attorney General to go easy on SNC, this Liberal government has made it abundantly clear whose side they are on. The rich, the powerful, the well-connected. They aren't here to make life better and more affordable for average, everyday Canadians. The Liberal government gave the CRA a billion dollars to tackle tax fraud and avoidance, and this is how it is being spent. Budget 2019 gives this government one last chance to live up to its own rhetoric. Will the government use this opportunity to finally ensure that the wealthiest in this country pay their fair share, or will it be more of the same, where working class and middle class Canadians, including recently settled refugees, are targeted by the CRA to fund more corporate cash giveaways? Here, here. Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Uh, Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to ensuring that Canadians receive the benefits and credits to which they are entitled. This commitment includes seeing that new Canadians have the information they require to understand the benefits and credits for which they may qualify, as well as their tax obligations. Mr. Speaker, the CRA is working hard to deliver services that make tax filing accessible and to ensure that the system is fair. You can appreciate, I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, that for newcomers to Canada, there's a lot to learn as they get settled in a new country. It is with this understanding that the CRA is part of a multi-departmental effort to provide information to refugees on tax filing and benefit entitlements upon their arrival in Canada. The CRA works closely with Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada to ensure that all benefit-related questions are answered and also aims to quickly resolve any problematic cases that arise. I know some of the most rewarding work that we do in our constituency office is helping those who have been wrongfully denied benefits at their own. Mr. Speaker, the CRA's work doesn't stop here, though. It's important to ensure that newcomers know about the benefits that they may be eligible for. For example, the Canada Child Benefit, the Goods and Services Tax, Harmonized Sales Tax Credit, and provincial and territorial programs as well. But it's most important that newcomers understand that it's by filing their taxes, even in cases when they have no income, that they can access credits and benefits to which they may be eligible. 
This is why the CRA actively promotes the awareness of the benefits to newcomers through various information materials and in-person outreach activities. The Community Volunteer Income Tax Program is a CRA program that supports community organizations and their volunteers in hosting tax preparation clinics where modest income individuals, including newcomers, can have their taxes done for free. Indeed, we offer this service. Uh, one of my staff, uh, Betty McDonald and Annie Ganish, actually does this uh, as part of the CRA volunteer program. Uh, the CRA has produced a number of promotional and informational materials for newcomers in various languages that are digital and paper-based. Designed to be accessible to a broad audience, these products include Newcomer's Fact Sheets, Newcomer's Promotional Card, Newcomer's Poster, an eight-part video series titled Newcomers to Canada and the Canadian Tax System. Having the materials available is one thing, but making sure that the information reaches the people who need it is another. It's why the CRA works through Canada's vast immigrant services network, including outreach through national, provincial, regional and community organizations to share products and information. Budget 2018 provided additional funding, Mr. Speaker, to the CRA to increase its outreach activities and the reach of the <coughs> program I described earlier to help more vulnerable individuals access benefits and credits designed to support them. In addition to making sure people have access to the services that they need, the CRA is supportive of Canadians seeking to comply with their tax obligations, providing newcomers with information and in a multitude of languages to understand what's required of them and helps them settle into a new life in Canada. I'll note in particular, though it wasn't in my prepared remarks, the Honourable Member raised certain concerns about tax loopholes for wealthy corporations. We've put forward a number of measures, in particular in our last federal budget, to combat this, this very kind of activity to ensure that our tax system is fair, helps those in need, and and certainly uh, make sure that those who are eligible for certain benefits uh, receive them in a timely way. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for uh, Vancouver East. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Parliamentary Secretary for his comments. But he misses the point. The point that I was raising is that CRA was targeting refugee families who lack the language capacity to respond uh, quickly enough for the CRA to address the issues. They raised the issue in the middle of the summer when the children were out of school and they were required to provide proof that their children are in school. For example, they have to go back and provide tenancy agreements to which they have to move multiple times to prove that they actually lived here in Canada. As an example, in a very tight timeline, no provisions were given to them to address these concerns. And even when the sponsor families, uh, the sponsorship families would say, I am prepared to verify for these families that they are here in Canada, that they went to school here in Canada, the children did, uh, and so on and that wasn't good enough. That is the point. And that's what I'm calling on the government to address. Do not target these individuals in that way. They are already... Parliamentary Secretary. Uh, Mr. Speaker, over the past three years, CRA has made significant changes to its services, including to the Benefit Validation Program. Uh, to the member's point about people uh, potentially being targeted and not responding in a, in a uh, quick enough way, the CRA has simplified its letters and expanded the list of eligible documents, and now is actually proactively communicating with those who don't even respond to the initial request. The fact is that there is a serious effort being made on the part of the CRA to ensure that those who are entitled to benefits know how to apply, know what they're entitled to, and in fact do receive receive those benefits. I canvassed a number of the programs during my initial remarks that CRA uses in an attempt to make sure that those who are entitled to the benefits receive them. This includes newcomers to Canada. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Calgary Shepherd. 